Today I'm going to answer a question from a student who goes by the name of TMT3. And the question comes from the video on batteries and current flow. And the question is, well, with conventional current you can still put your arrow in the direction of electrons, right? If you have plus one amp coming out of the positive terminal, that is equivalent to minus one amp coming out of the negative terminal, which is the direction electrons move. Thus, current arrows in the direction of negative charges, electrons, will have negative values. Am I correct? And the answer is, yes, you are correct. But I'm going to show you a problem with that particular way of thinking. So let's take a look at a circuit and see what we're talking about here. So here's a battery and a resistor making a complete circuit. Let's make this 10 volts and label it positive and negative for clarity. And let's make this a 10 ohm resistor. So how much current do we have flowing in the circuit? Well, it's 10 ohms divided into 10 volts. So we have one amp of current, but which way is the current flowing? Well, the electron flow camp will say that we actually have electrons flowing in that direction. So we have one amp of current flowing from negative to positive. And why is that current flowing? Well, because we have electrical pressure. We have a greater negative pressure here, pushing the electrons toward a less negative or positive pressure here. So we have a push coming from this direction and a pull coming from that direction, causing the electrons to move. And let's see what happens when those electrons hit this resistor here. So we have the current flowing in and we know that when the current hits the electron we get a higher voltage or a higher pressure. So we get a more negative voltage here and a more positive voltage here. Or we can look at that as a more negative voltage and a less negative voltage. Or we can look at this as a more positive voltage and a less positive voltage. So we can work that either way. And so we get a higher voltage or a more negative voltage which is a negative number or a lower voltage or a more positive voltage which is a positive can you see where i'm going here if you think mathematically then that works very well for you and that's why there's still an electron flow camp out there and it works great for people whose minds wrap really well around mathematics and mathematical formulas and looking at things in a mathematical context. More negative, less negative, more positive, less positive works very well for them. But I have a reputation for explaining these circuits in a much more clear way than the average instructor. Thank you for all those who have been praising me and my ability to explain these circuits. Why do I do this? because I am absolutely terrible at wrapping my mind around mathematical formulas. I'm much better at visualizing and intuitively seeing what happens if we have a logical way of looking at it. Here I have, it wants to go from a lower pressure to a higher pressure. That just, yeah, I can say, all right, it's a less positive, more, but I, I can see that. But it's just so much easier to just take the head off that arrow. I don't know why I erased the amp there put the head over this way, have the current going the opposite direction. And does it change how the circuit works? Not one iota. So I can use my imagination to look at it going either way I want. There's only a few cases like explaining how a vacuum tube works down at the electron level, explaining how a CRT works. You certainly have to follow the electrons. But in almost all circuits, it doesn't matter. The circuit works the same way, either way you imagine the current flow. Now I have something very intuitive. High pressure, low pressure. The current wants to go from the higher pressure to the lower pressure. It's just like breathing. If I compress my lungs and increase the pressure in my lungs, now the pressure inside is greater than the pressure outside and the air wants to flow from the inside to the outside and I get a current of air flowing from the higher pressure to the lower pressure. Or I can reverse that and expand my lungs and get a lower pressure inside, higher pressure outside, lower pressure inside, and the current wants to flow the opposite direction. It's very intuitive. And then when the current hits this resistor, naturally there's going to be a backup of electricity behind that. So I'm going to get a higher pressure or a higher voltage there. It's just like water going down a slow drain. It's going to back up behind the slow drain and give you a higher head pressure where behind the drain. And just like I explained with my soda straw, if I blow through my soda straw and pinch it down, the air is going that direction, but it hits the pinch. And so I get a backup of air behind it. So a higher pressure on this side and a lower pressure on that side. And I can reverse that too. If I suck on it, 
I stuck the air out so I get a lower pressure on this side and higher pressure on that side. And I can think of electricity as doing exactly the same thing. Why do I have a lower pressure here? Well, I have a low pressure here sucking on it, so it sucks the pressure out, leaving a higher pressure up there. It works either way, and it's very intuitive. Let me extend this to another circuit that might be a little confusing at times. Let's draw a simple common emitter amplifier with an NPN transistor. There's my input, there's my output. This is about as simple as it gets. And let's make that plus 10 volts just because I can. And this voltage is going to be fixed because it's connected directly to a battery and there's a very low impedance. And so I'm not going to get much voltage change when I change the current. But we do know that where the current enters the resistor, I have to have a higher voltage and lower voltage where it exits. And the higher that current gets, the lower this voltage gets. So it's kind of like backwards, and it might be a little confusing to people. But I can reverse that around and say, well, I get a lower voltage here the more current I have, because to get more current, that means I have to be sucking harder on this side. Basically, what we have is that's acting like a variable resistor. And as that resistor gets lower, I get less resistance, and so I get less and less pressure. It's like that drain is getting less and less clogged, so it's going to get less pressure. Or in the case of the soda straw, I'm releasing the pinch, and I get less and less pinch, and so I get lower pressure. Same kind of things happening here. What we can look at that is, well, as I decrease that resistance, I'm allowing more of the suction, if you will, to suck on that, pulling that voltage down. So another way we can intuitively think about what's going on with the circuit. So Conventional current allows us to visualize things much easier than electron flow does. But if your mind wraps around formulas and mathematical concepts better than mine does, and apparently a lot of other people because conventional flow has become almost universal in the industry, well, more power to you. That's great. It's just that you're in the smaller camp now. When I was studying electronics in the 70s, the electron flow camp was much bigger, especially the military schools used electron flow. But even the military schools now use conventional flow to teach their electronics. So it's become almost universal in both academia, the military, and in industry to think of conventional flow. One thing I would want to point out on your comment is that can't we call electron flow a negative current flow? Well, not really. Let me explain that. Here's the circuit that we use to demonstrate how a capacitor charges and discharges. Not a particularly practical circuit, but it tells us how a capacitor acts in the charge and discharge cycle. I'm going to just make this a 10 volt battery because I can. I'm not going to worry about the values of the resistor and the capacitor at this point because I don't really need to. So here's our circuit where we can charge the capacitor and then discharge the capacitor and see what happens. I have a video that discusses this in great detail. I have linked below and up there, but we don't need to get into details right now. We just know that if I close that switch, I'm going to get current flowing into that capacitor and that capacitor is going to charge up and get more and more voltage. It's like filling an air storage tank on an air compressor system. And eventually that's going to fill up completely and I'll have the same voltage here as I have there. Now it's full, just like an air compressor filling a tank. So now the current flowing in that direction we'll call a positive current. So I'll just say positive A for positive current. Now what I'm going to do is open this switch. That will stop the charging. Now I'm going to close this switch and now what's going to happen, I have a circuit this way and now this looks pretty much like a battery, positive to negative. It's not like a battery because it doesn't have a chemical energy store, but it does have enough energy to discharge. And what's going to happen? The current is going to flow that way as it discharges. And notice that now the current is flowing the opposite way through the resistor. So we have current flowing that way, we'll call positive current. Now the conventional current has reversed direction, so now we call that negative current. And if I hook up an oscilloscope to that to measure the voltage and I extrapolate current from it, I'm going to see that when it's charging, it goes positive, And when it's discharging, it goes negative. So I get a negative current. Negative current is simply current flowing the opposite direction. So you can see that if I say that, well, this is conventional flow is positive current, but electron flow is negative current, well, I have both positive and negative current going at the same time. Can you say that? Yes. I mean, uh, we actually do have 
negative charges going this way and for all intents and purposes we see positive charges moving the other way. So we could argue that there's negative charges going one way and positive charges going the other way, but we don't want to think about it that way because it doesn't serve any purpose in analyzing the circuit and it can become confusing and furthermore if I say that positive flow is conventional flow and negative flow is electron flow then what happens when the conventional flow reverses direction? So I can't have simply positive flow, negative flow. I no longer have that option if I say negative flow is the movement of electrons. So don't mix electron flow and conventional flow into the same circuit analysis because it serves no purpose to do so and it will become very confusing and it does leave out the option of having conventional current go one direction as positive flow and going the opposite direction as negative flow. So it leaves part of what we can use to analyze our circuit out of the equation. So we don't want to think of conventional flow being positive flow and electron flow being negative flow. We don't want to mix them into the same circuit. So electron flow works, but most people work with conventional flow, I think, just because it's just more intuitive. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.